As coffee stands pop up on almost every corner, the competition can heat up. One way to add an extra kick to that caffeine, have your baristas wear next to nothing, giving new meaning to a tall, skinny latte. But with fewer clothes comes much greater scrutiny, and not surprisingly, controversy. Here's ABC's Neil Karlinski. In Spokane, Washington, there's two kinds of coffee. Hot and, well, Hi. choose your cliché, steamy, sizzling, whatever. This is where soft porn meets soy lattes. What are you selling here, exactly? Selling coffee. Just coffee? Just coffee. Just coffee with like a, a pretty smile maybe and some booby action sometimes. <laughs> Talking to a topless barista with only stickers or pasties to cover part of her may seem a little weird until you realize this is the land of the so-called bikini barista. Well you have to be outgoing to do this kind of thing. Because you can't be shy and for one be wearing what I wear. Like it or not, it's a shrewd business move. drive through coffee stands may not look like much, but they can be very profitable. Last year, men between the ages of 18 and 54 spent nearly $7 billion buying coffee from drive throughs and that's up more than 8% from 2012. Add in sex appeal and names like Bear Beans, Big Shots, and Devil's Brew, and you get the kind of marketing sizzle even Starbucks can't or won't touch. Do you ever feel a little creeped out, you know, that guys are coming here and just ogling? Not really, because they never really make it seem that way. Every once in a while you'll get a creepy one that says some weird stuff to you, but it doesn't really happen that much. Thank you guys for all coming. Um, to say that not everyone's thrilled with the idea of half-naked 20-somethings selling coffee is an understatement. It's good to tell people, look, you can't just avoid it. That sounds really nice in theory, but you can't just drive down other streets. These are on all the most major streets in Spokane. Meet Kimberly Curry and Hillary Van Aken, two moms in a growing army that's trying to change Spokane's indecent exposure laws to force the bikini baristas to get dressed. Kimberly says it all started during a simple drive through town with her family. My daughter just said, Mommy, look, there's a lady without a shirt on. And I was like, what? So we all turn our heads. And, and at that point, my three, five, and seven-year-olds were exposed to something that I would have never wanted them to see. And that was enough for the mothers to mobilize. We caught up with them, petitions in hand, during their first door-knocking session and while they worked the playgrounds. Together, the 10,000 signatures it could take to put the issue on a citywide ballot in November. We feel really strongly about the issue, first of all. We, anything that has to do with, with our children and protecting what they're exposed to. Outside Seattle, the mom's worst fears came true when undercover police sting revealed women allegedly bearing all for extra cash. Similar activity at stands in the area, though, led to a new law just this year, restricting the use of pasties and tape instead of bikinis. This is our city, and we should have the right to choose what we will or what we will not allow. The moms say they are determined to force a crackdown to make the knowing exposure of designated body parts in a public place without full or opaque covering unlawful. When similar complaints bubbled over in Oregon, the bikini barista boss there voluntarily backed down. I've done this in an effort to reduce tension without restructuring my entire business plan just according to a small group's belief on morality. If you wonder who would have the chutzpah to put women up to this kind of thing in the first place, you're probably not imagining a mother of three who admits she could never do this. But owner Sarah Burnell says she's not worried about a change in the law. You have to pass laws that apply to everybody. I mean, if they're gonna tell these girls to cover up more, they're gonna tell everybody to cover up more, and then I mean, it's just not gonna sit well. Like who else? Who's everybody? People at the beach, you, me, people walking down the road. Burnell owns three stands and says the business model is as simple as you'd imagine. Sex sells, including coffee. Putting these coffee stands on a level normal ones can't touch. It makes way more money. And is that big a difference? It's that big of a difference. It's huge. Like 50% more or? Uh, I'd say close to 100% more. Have you ever had anyone hassle you when you've come to work? One time a lady came and she told me my family should be uh, ashamed to have me as a daughter because of the, like, cause obviously I was dressed like this. What's the line for you as to how much they should, they should show? 
Oh, uh, what, whatever is legal. But any kind of provocative behavior is not okay. If there was ever an issue to invoke America over a bare-chested Americano, this is apparently it. I think you're taking away people's freedom. Once you start doing that, telling them what they can wear and what they can't wear, it's a constitutional issue right there. These girls are not hurting anybody. They make a good cup of coffee, they're friendly. Yeah, they wear some sexy clothes, but you know, good for them. They have a body that can do that, and I think a lot of women are insecure about that. If there's one thing bikini baristas do seem to have plenty of, it's loyal customers rushing to their defense. Five dollars. Thank you. you. I've gone to different stands, but once I started going to this stand, I don't go to any other stand. They, they get all my business. Meanwhile, between the bikini baristas and the unhappy moms, there's a new front to make that chest in this campaign. Welcome to Hot Cup of Joe. Former male stripper Chris Mullins just opened the town's first topless men's coffee stand. Don't, From don't, don't take off your pants, what are you doing? They're down, you know, I mean, obviously we're not gonna show off anything nude. Everybody had been raising a stink uh, about uh, bikini stands. And I was like, well, you know, being that I was a stripper at one point, this would be kind of fun. Mullins is scouting for locations to open a second stand, but so far, his business, which sells coffee and hot dogs, hasn't quite taken off the way the ladies have. You sound almost disappointed that no one has complained about you. I kind of hope to raise a little bit of an eyebrow. The moms insist it's no double standard because shirtless men are publicly acceptable. They're fine with bikinis too, they say, just not the more provocative stuff. I think allowing anything like this is just the tipping point. It's just going to keep escalating where it's all over and it's acceptable. I want to like go to the beach and petition like I see like half naked people and like freak out. It would be the same thing. It's just ridiculous. Forget about what tastes better. Tonight the coffee war being fought from here to Los Angeles is over what's tasteful. Party time. I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in Spokane, Washington.